Circumference and the Isle of Emeter, a Math Adventure, written by Sidney Noshwander, illustrated by Wayne Gehan. Young Purr sat with her uncle and aunt, Circumference and Lady Di of Emeter. Her cousin Radius was teaching her the game of inners and edges. A player makes a shape out of tiles, calling out the number of squares used, explained Radius. The first person to correctly count all the outside edges keeps those pieces. Circumference arranged his tiles into a square. Inners are nine, he said. Twelve edges, counted Purr, gathering up her winnings. Lady Di made one long row of tiles. Inners again are nine, she said. And edges are twenty, exclaimed Purr. I love this game. It belonged to the Countess of Arena, said Circumference. She used to live on the Isle of Emeter, just off the coast. A sea serpent is said to guard the place now, so no one dares to go there. That evening, Purr played the game by herself. She made several shapes with the tiles, thinking about the edges. With squares, I can count just one side and multiply by four. For rectangles, I can add one long side and one short side together, then double it. Purr put the pieces away, noticing a picture of Emeter's castle and tiny words painted inside the box. The secret of Emeter is the name of the game, open where inside and edges are the same. That night, she dreamed about the little island and the mysterious message. Purr woke up early the next morning, determined to visit the castle and discover its secret. She tiptoed into the kitchen. Radius was already there. You're up early, he remarked. I'm going to sail out and explore the island, Purr answered. Would you like to come along? Why not, said Radius, stuffing an orange into his pocket. That sea serpent is probably just a myth. Radius and Purr hurried down to the dock. They boarded a small sailboat and headed for Emeter. We'll be there in no time with this breeze, said Radius. When they reached the island, they walked around the castle. They counted seven walled-in doorways. These doorways remind me of a giant inners and edges game, said Purr. This one has 14 edges. Radius nodded and said, and 12 inners. That was fast, said Purr. I multiplied the four stones down the side by the three stones across the top, answered Radius. It's quicker than counting each one. At the fifth doorway, Radius said, inners are 16, edges are also 16, said Purr. The inside and the outside are the same number, remarked Radius. The inners and edges box said, open where inside and edges are the same, exclaimed Purr. Could this be the entrance? She tapped on a stone and the door rumbled open. The two cousins stepped inside just as large waves began crashing against the castle walls. Purr and Radius found themselves in a hall with a grand staircase. They noticed a large A in the middle of the floor. That A must stand for arena, said Purr. And look, there's a rhyme around the letter. Count half as many inside as out. This unlocks the towers without a doubt. Count what? Radius asked, gazing around the empty hall. How about those key shapes? Answered Purr, looking at the floor. Keys unlock towers. Suddenly, a window high above them shattered. In snaked the head of a sea serpent. Its eyes glowed green gold and its scales shimmered like jewels. Quick, let's start counting, Purr cried out as the creature howled at them. She pointed to the first key shape. Twenty-eight edges, fifteen inners, said Radius. That's not half as many inside as out. They tried another one. Twenty-two edges, cried Purr, but only ten inners, answered Radius. Then Purr found one with 24 outside edges. There are 12 squares inside. That equals half the edges, cheered Radius. This is the one. One of the tiles was loose. Radius lifted it up and saw a key. He grabbed it and they ran to the nearest tower. They unlocked the door, ran inside, and slammed it shut. We're safe for now, gasped Purr. Radius looked at the ribbon tied to the key. There are words on this, he said. Where 200 floor squares fit inside, Emeter's secret does reside. How can square tiles fit on the floor of a round room? Wondered Purr. Radius shrugged. Right now, I'm too hungry to think. He pulled the orange out of his pocket. He cut the fruit and gave part to Purr. 
This slice is round like the tower floor, she said. She cut the piece into two halves. Then she stretched the halves out and fit them together. There, now this circle has been reshaped into a rectangle. A lumpy, bumpy rectangle, observed Radius. So, Purr cut the eight orange segments equally into 16 smaller ones. These she rearranged into a smoother rectangle. Much better, she said, and we already know how to figure out the inside of this shape. Right, said Radius. It's just like with the castle doorways. You multiply one long side by one short side. Halfway around the orange slice is the same as the long side, observed Purr. And the length of an orange segment is about the same as the short side. So we just multiply the two measurements to get the inners of the circle. Purr looked around them. Imagine that the floor is a giant orange slice that I've cut and stretched out. Halfway around is the same as the long side of the rectangle, so I need to measure the distance around half the tower. Purr's boot was the same length as the square stone tile. She counted off 22 steps around the top half of the room. I also have to measure the distance from the edge of the room to its center, said Purr. That will be like the short side of the rectangle. She stepped off seven squares. Radius multiplied the two measurements. 22 times 7 equals 154, he said. That's not enough, replied Purr. We need to find a room with 200 floor tile squares. Let's keep looking. What about the sea serpent? asked Radius. They cautiously opened the door. Everything was quiet. Let's go, said Purr. Together they scrambled up a ladder and ran across a high walkway. Down below, the sea serpent erupted out of the water. Reaching up to grab them, it crashed into the stones. The walkway collapsed into the sea just as Radius and Purr entered a second tower. That was a close call, said Purr, catching her breath. They climbed up a spiral staircase. At the top, Purr and Radius found themselves in a bell tower. I don't think the sea serpent can reach us here, said Purr. Let's hope not, answered Radius, peering over the edge. Immediately, Purr counted off 25 boot lengths around the half of the outside edge of the room. She then counted another eight steps from the edge to the floor center. 25 times eight equals 200 squares, she said. This is the place, now what do we do? Look, said Radius, pointing to words on the ceiling. The squares in the circle are the secret's key. Use the number to signal the C. This bell could be the signal, said Purr, pulling on the rope. Radius covered his ears and counted as Purr rang it 200 times. After the last peal, the oceans began churning and foaming. The monster rose up from the depths and faced Purr. She stood before it, trying not to tremble. The creature's jaws opened and Purr could see rows of gleaming teeth. Out of his mouth dropped a jeweled locket. Purr caught it. Inside was a note. The Isle of Emeter is yours to keep. The set will protect you awake or asleep. The note was signed by Countess Arena. Are you the Palimpsest? Purr asked the creature. The sea serpent snorted and bowed before her. Radius and Purr returned to the mainland riding on the Palimpsest. Sir Conference and Lady Di spotted them from the castle and rushed down to greet them. Mercy upon us, they exclaimed. You're riding a sea serpent. We've had an amazing adventure, said Purr. Tell us all about it, said her uncle and aunt. We unlocked the secret of the castle, said Radius. Purr is now the rightful owner of the Isle of Emeter. We had to find a round tower room that contained exactly 200 floor squares, added Purr. We discovered that if you multiply the distance halfway around a circle by the distance from its edge to the center, you'll know how many squares could fit inside it. Circumference smiled, so one half of the circumference times the radius equals the inside of a circle. Wonderful! The next day, Circumference and Lady Di held a special celebration for Purr. People from miles around attended. On behalf of the Countess Arena, I pronounce you Lady Purr of Imiter, said Circumference. This adventure has taken you full circle. Purr curtsied. Thank you, she said. I'm really good now at counting edges. Circumference laughed. 
So you are. For this reason, the outside edge of any flat, straight-sided shape shall be called the perimeter after you. What should we call the inside of these shapes? asked Lady Di. Let's call it area, suggested Purr, and honor, and honor Countess Serena and her amazing floors. And everyone burst into a round of applause. End note. In the story, Lady Purr of Emeter used an orange slice to figure out the area of a circle. She reshaped the slice into a rectangle where one half of its circumference was the length and the radius was its width. By playing the game of inners and edges, Purr also learned that the area of a rectangle equals its length multiplied by its width. Armed with these two ideas, Purr discovered that the inside of a circle could be figured out by multiplying one half of the circumference by its radius. The standard formula for the area of a circle is A equals pi r squared. The following steps illustrate how to move from Purr's formula to the standard one.